Superhot geothermal is in a league of its own. It can reach economic and power parity with oil and gas by producing up to 10 times more energy per well than a typical geothermal well. And that is the key to scaling geothermal power production to terawatts. We walk over it every day. Concrete, grass, asphalt, all hiding a heat so immense it could replace oil, coal, even sunlight. It's always been there, just beneath the surface, waiting. Not for discovery, we've known about it, but for the courage to reach it. Because digging that deep has always been too hard, too expensive, too dangerous. But something has changed. In Texas, a beam of light is doing what steel never could, melting through the earth, vaporizing stone. No drills, no bits, just energy. It sounds like science fiction, but it's not. The future of clean power may already be burning beneath our feet. Let's dive in. A hole in the earth, a hole in convention. They call it drilling, but it doesn't feel like drilling anymore. No spinning metal claws, no thunderous engines, no plumes of drilling mud rising like smoke. At a glance, it looks almost peaceful. A rig like many others parked under the Texas sun. But something very different is happening here. Instead of brute force, there's light. Not visible light, but millimeter waves, silent, focused beams of electromagnetic radiation. They're invisible, but powerful enough to melt granite like butter in a hot pan. Do not break it, not crack it, but melt it. And not in a lab this time, in the field. Real granite, real earth. At the center of it all is Quays, a company born from nuclear fusion labs and reimagined for the crust beneath our feet. They're not just building a better drill, they're throwing out the idea of drilling altogether. Instead of bits and blades, they've built a beam, a gyrotron-powered pulse that cuts through stone with no contact, no pressure, no wear. The result is a circular borehole lined in natural glass, created as the rock melts and cools against its heat. No cracks, no mud, no collapse. What they've built isn't just a piece of equipment, it's a new philosophy. One that challenges how we think about energy, depth, and possibility. For centuries, we've relied on physical force to shape the Earth. Quays is showing us another path. One that uses precision, patience, and light. And at the bottom of that quiet beam, a door. A door to heat, to power, to a version of the future we might have missed if no one had tried something so strange, something so quietly radical. Fusion-born, earthbound. This story begins in a place that feels far removed from the drilling fields of Texas. It begins in the clean, silent corridors of MIT, in the heart of a fusion research lab. There, Paul Waskoff, an unassuming physicist, wasn't thinking about geothermal energy at all. He was thinking about the stars. Fusion energy, the process that powers our sun, has always promised limitless power. At its core is plasma, gas so hot it breaks atoms apart and fuses them back together, releasing immense energy. But to make that happen on Earth, researchers use a strange kind of technology, the gyrotron, a vacuum tube that emits millimeter waves electromagnetic beams that can heat plasma to over 150 million degrees Celsius. Waskov worked with gyrotrons for years, but one day he asked a different question. What if we turned the beam downward? What if we stopped trying to reach the sun and tried reaching the earth instead? The idea was wild. Gyrotrons are delicate, lab-born, expensive. They weren't built for dirt, vibration, or rock dust. And yet, the physics made sense. Millimeter waves can melt stone. They just had to be focused, shaped, and delivered with precision. So Waskov began testing. Granite samples, controlled pulses. Slowly, the stone gave way, melted, vitrified, transformed. 
It wasn't just theory anymore, it was evidence. From that spark, Quaze was born. Not a fusion company, a geothermal one. A startup that stole technology from the stars and aimed it at the soil. It's a strange marriage, fusion science and rock drilling, but one that works. Because at its core, energy is energy. And the same light that can ignite plasma can also unmake stone. What began as a lab experiment became a new kind of torch. Not to light the sky, but to open the earth. Melting stone with light. At first glance, it doesn't look like much. A rig, a pipe, a hum in the air, no spinning bits, no flying rock chips, no roar of metal biting into stone. But something remarkable is happening just beneath the surface. Instead of grinding, they are melting. The heart of the system is a gyrotron, a long cylindrical device wrapped in superconducting magnets and cooled by oil. It generates a beam of millimeter waves, invisible to the eye, but powerful enough to vaporize granite. This energy is funneled through a movable waveguide, an engineered pipe that not only carries the beam, but also adjusts its position as the hole deepens. And the rock? It doesn't stand a chance. As the beam pulses downward, the granite softens, liquefies, and forms a thin, glossy coating along the borehole walls. This vitrification process seals cracks, prevents collapse, and eliminates the need for heavy drilling mud. Air alone is enough to sweep the vaporized rock out, where it's cooled, filtered through water, and collected as fine particles. Every detail has been engineered with care, radar systems to measure depth, pyrometers to monitor temperature, and beam shapers that transform the narrow pulse into a perfectly circular pattern. The result is not a rough tunnel, but a flawless bore, smooth, symmetrical, and sealed by its own melted skin. Engineers at the site can hold the cores in their hands. Glassy, solid proof that stone can be undone by light alone. What once seemed impossible, drilling with no drill, is now something you can touch. Now first, like always, be sure to hit the like button down below. It helps us out tremendously with the reach of this video. Thank you. The cost of going deeper. There's always a price to reach what others can't. With Quays, it's not the drill bits that wear out. It's the questions that don't go away. Can it scale? Will it work in every kind of rock? And what happens when water, cold and constant, seeps into a hole designed to stay dry? Vaporizing groundwater isn't part of the plan. It takes far more energy than stone. If too much leaks in, the whole system could stall. That's not just a technical risk, it's a financial one. Then there's the gyrotron itself. It draws 100 kilowatts of power now, with plans to scale to one megawatt. That's the output of a small wind turbine just to run a single beam. And these machines aren't built for field work. They were made for spotless labs. To survive in the grit and shock of drilling sites, they've had to be reinvented, cooled with oil, packed into containers, shielded from dust and failure. It's working, but not without cost. Shipping, assembly, diagnostics, power management, it all adds up. Every foot deeper is a test of patience, logistics, and trust in a beam you can't see. The Earth doesn't give up its heat easily. But then again, nothing worth having ever does. The power beneath the pressure. The deeper you go, the hotter it gets. That's not just geology, it's a promise. Roughly 25 degrees Celsius for every kilometer. It sounds modest until you realize what weights 10 kilometers down. At that depth, the temperature can soar past 375 degrees. That's the threshold where water changes, not into steam, but into something stranger. 
supercritical fluid. Neither liquid nor gas, but something in between. And in that state, it holds extraordinary energy. Drive that supercritical steam through a turbine and you unlock power far beyond what normal geothermal wells can offer. This is Quasar's real target. Not just heat, but super hot rock. Energy so dense that by some estimates, one well could generate up to 10 times more electricity than conventional geothermal systems. 10 times more, without sun, without wind, without pause. It's always there. Beneath every continent, beneath our homes and cities and fields, a battery so vast that just a fraction of a percent could power civilization for thousands of years. But to tap it, we need depth. And not just any depth. Controlled, stable, pressure-sealed boreholes capable of reaching these hidden cauldrons. That's what this technology offers. A way to descend, safely, into the furnace beneath. Other clean energy sources come and go with the weather. This one doesn't. It's not intermittent. It's not exposed. It's not fragile. It's buried, waiting. All we need to do is go deep enough and dare to let the heat rise. Profit or pipe dream? Clean energy alone isn't enough, not in a world built on margins and returns. This is where dreams often die. Not in the lab, not in the field, but in a spreadsheet. Wind and solar are cheap, around $30 per megawatt hour. Nuclear, often closer to $100. Quaze estimates their geothermal could range between $68 and $115. That puts them near nuclear levels, but still behind the renewables we already trust. So why would anyone switch? Carlos Araque, Quaze's CEO, has an answer. Internal rate of return. That's the number oil and gas companies live and die by. Fossil fuel projects often return 15 to 30 percent annually. Wind and solar, just 5 to 10 percent. If deep geothermal can hit the higher bracket, if it can compete not just on price, but on profit, it becomes irresistible. The kind of project oil giants don't just admire, but adopt. That's the bet. And it's more than numbers. Quaze designed its system to slot into existing drilling infrastructure. No reinvention, just retraining. The same crews, the same rigs, the same rhythm, aimed downward, but toward a cleaner prize. It's a gamble, yes, but one where the rules are shifting. If the earth can pay out like oil, but without the carbon, everything changes. Even the skeptics might follow. In two and a half years, Quays moved from melting pebbles in a lab to vaporizing granite beneath the Texas sky. They've gone deeper, not just into the earth, but into a question humanity has long avoided. What if clean energy was already here, beneath us, waiting? This isn't about fantasy, it's about fire. Controlled, contained, quietly burning in the dark. Whether they succeed or not, Quaze has shown something vital, that the future might not lie above us, in the stars, but below us, in the silence. We've always feared what lies beneath. Maybe it's time we embraced it instead.